Hey you, yeah you, come here for a second. I wanna let you in on a little inside joke. What do you get when you take a popular game from the 80s and mash two of its main characters together? Inside. Eh? Eh? <laughs> Inside? You get it? Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your Everyday Nerd B-Sides Editions. I'm your host, Zack Snyder, and on the B-Sides, we pull from every corner of nerd culture to talk about anything and everything that piques my interest. A few years ago, I was very fortunate to receive a review copy from Play Dead for their debut game, Limbo. I loved this game for its creepy atmosphere, confusing but weirdly intriguing story, and its interesting puzzles. Unfortunately, I got the game around the same time that I was doing mainly Let's Plays, and then I was in college, so I never actually got around to finishing the game. A couple years later, their second game, Inside, came out, and I decided to kind of wait to touch it before I finished Limbo. But instead, I just recently finally played all of Inside on a Twitch stream. You can check out the entire playthrough in the description box below, and needless to say, it was phenomenal. Not only does it take a lot of the same elements that made Limbo so great, but it also kind of ends up being the weirdest game I've ever played. For those of you that don't know anything about it, Inside is a 2016 puzzle platformer adventure game developed by Play Dead. In it, you play as an unnamed boy who finds his way through a disturbing and almost surreal atmosphere, encountering strange and unnerving dangers, and eventually finding himself in a really bizarre situation that I can't quite explain without spoiling the game. So spoilers later on in the video, we're going to be talking about Inside's ending. So if you haven't played Inside throughout its entirety yet, definitely, definitely make it a priority to check it out before you watch the entire video. But also the sponsor for today's video is Humble Bundle, which means you can actually get Inside today for only $10 along with six other horror games. More about that at the end of the video. But before we dig into what really makes Inside good, let's talk about why this game is so f***ing bizarre. When you start up inside, there is no cutscene. There's no dialogue, no directions. You're just a small boy who can only go forward. After pushing through a caution sign, hiding from some suspicious men, and running away from dogs, you eventually find yourself in some kind of strange warehouse, where you can then climb on a dead pig and use this hanging helmet to control these people in the background. These people move in the same direction as you do, very similar to the new filter on TikTok. Yo, you ever be taking a dump with the bros? Or is it just me? Hey, let's go! It's at this point that Inside takes a weird and interesting turn. And yet, I can't quite explain what that turn is. In fact, never once do we hear a single spoken word throughout this game. Music is sparse, there is no cutscene, and the gameplay mechanics are limited, yet very well implemented throughout. Inside is a game about exploration and storytelling, and its story kind of takes the passenger seat. But while most puzzle games try to throw in a story mode into their puzzles, I don't feel that at all with Inside. Instead, I feel like Play Dead crafted this world and cleverly placed their puzzles within the environment in such a way that it never feels obtuse or obstructive. I mean, yes, they are puzzles. You have to solve them like they are a puzzle, but they're almost always very logical. Almost as if it's you're in this position as the boy and you too would move a box in order to stand on it in order to get over a wall. These puzzles are crafted within the environment very, very well. Kind of like this. No, like serious, I wish this was a bit. Like, I, I legitimately just got stuck in the bathroom and I had to use this screwdriver because I'm trying to fix the stupid door. I had to dig into the door to get out. I seriously thought for a second I was gonna have to like crawl out of that window or call the cops because I didn't know how I was gonna get out of here. So in other words, I always felt engaged, in control of the player, and most importantly, immersed. As you get further and further into the story, puzzles become more difficult, but very rarely do they feel non-intuitive. Now, I did have to look up a walkthrough because I was streaming the game and I didn't want to waste my viewers' time, but 
If I was just playing this on my own on a Saturday afternoon while it's raining, you can beat the game in only a few hours, so I never would have even looked up a walkthrough in the first place. While looking at other reviews, I did notice that it is a common complaint that most of the puzzles have far too few mechanics. And I would actually completely disagree. Considering that this is a shorter game, I feel like there are just the right amount of mechanics introduced and utilized throughout the entire game. In fact, I would have loved to see certain mechanics show up even more, especially things like the mind control helmet, which is only really mainly used in one big section towards the middle and sparsely used throughout smaller sections. It would have been really cool to make even bigger puzzles with this same mechanic. When you start the game, you realize that death is a reoccurring mechanic. It's not really important to the main story, at least not that I know of, but it is important to the way you play the game. There are many dangers that take place throughout inside. So instead of forcing you to sit through a tutorial for each puzzle type, there's a bit of a trial and error element which makes death not punishing, but yet a learning tool. This is something that I think can interrupt the atmosphere and the flow of the gameplay, especially since you're supposed to kind of feel unnerved and on the edge of your seat the entire game. But honestly, I still try to avoid dying as much as possible, even if it didn't matter to the core progression of the game. In other words, I still felt unnerved throughout most of this experience. And I think the reason behind that is because of part of the experience aspect of this game. So I want to talk about the ending. I want to talk about some very specific moments that I really, really appreciated and enjoyed in Inside, but that doesn't mean we have spoilers. So again, I'm going to give you the spoiler warning, go to this timestamp in order to avoid it and then check out the sponsor at the end if you haven't played the game because you can get it for 10 bucks. With most shorter indie titles, oftentimes it's the story that drives you to the very end. Since it only takes a few hours to play these games, the developers really want to push you to completion, giving you hints and tutorials and dialogue and cutscene just to kind of pad out the runtime and make it feel like a bigger game than it really is. But what's unique about Inside is that none of this really happens, yet the story still drove me to the very end of the game. My favorite moment is when there are these blast cannons happening in the background that can and will kill you and so you have to time your movements just right to make sure that you don't die. There's no music in this area at all and that definitely helped with the intensity of the gameplay. Now I did think that we would have some kind of big revelation at the end of this section and we didn't but I will say while I was streaming this I decided to play one of my comedy songs over this section and now I would like to share a little bit of that experience with you. I don't know if it's a good idea, but I think I'm gonna do it anyways. So we're gonna do it slowly. The way you get to hear the, uh, the emotional weight of the song. This is gonna be wild. <laughs> Last Saturday, I was sitting on the couch, eating some chips, watching some TV. It was a relaxing evening, but then it I'm concerned. This is not okay. Before, honestly, I'm still quite confused. But there it was, my peepee. It fell asleep. <laughs> if I asleep, my baby fell asleep. Whenever you want to, man, I'm down. I never thought that it could happen. But let me tell you from experience, it fell oh, asleep. My baby. But cannons and peepees falling asleep aside, as you make your way through this game, you start to question literally everything. Why is this boy on his own? Why is there grown men trying to kill you when you get caught? What are these weird fish-like humans that also will kill you? Probably most important, why are these people with no faces walking around being controlled by other humans? And while I do have a couple of theories that other people have kind of validated online, I, I have no answers to any of these questions. 
I don't even know if the theories are true. I have absolutely no idea. In fact, by the end of the game, I had so many more questions than before. Like, what the fuck is this thing? Okay, so towards the end of this game, we find ourselves in a facility. And it's at this point, people have stopped attacking you. Weirdly enough, the longer the game goes, the less threats we actually have. We don't even really die that often, but that's besides the point. When you get into this big room, we see that there's a group of people who are observing something in this glass cage. You find your way around it, and eventually you end up in the glass cage along with this. Thanks, Damien. You're welcome. Thanks! Sorry, that was my gay roommate. What? 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 Nani? Nani? You find your way around it, and eventually you end up in the glass cage along with this thing. And not only that, but now you are this thing a big Cronenberg blobby monster made out of other humans. And this is where things get wild. Also kind of funny. It's like, it's actually kind of hilarious. Like you just finish the game as this blob monster and like people start helping you like get through the area and you're just rolling around and it's, it's kind of like, like if you add Seinfeld music to it. <laughs> But like I said, I, I don't understand any of this. There's theories that say that you were the blob the whole time or you were being mind controlled the whole time. But at the end of the day, none of it really makes any sense, especially considering the fact that you do end up controlling the blob, moving it around the facility and eventually making it outside looking like a beached well. But this entire game, I was constantly wondering what on earth was happening. And I thought that by the end of the game, we would have some kind of answer to what the game is about or what the story is. And yet I still don't understand any of it. And while some people are probably not gonna get any closure from this, honestly, I think I'm okay with this because Inside is not a game that I need answers for. I love the game that it's so esoteric without being incoherent. We'll never know what the story actually means, but there is a full story here. You are a boy <laughs> who turned into a blob. Cue the music, Bruno Floss. There's a blob and there's a boy. There's a boy and there's a blob. See, it's, it's very simple. And story aside, it's a fun and engaging game. I love how simple the controls are, yet how versatile the gameplay is without it being confusing. I love the eerie atmosphere with spot on sound design and its sparse use of music. I love a lot of the puzzles. Again, most of them were very intuitive while still making me think and use my resources efficiently. Overall, Inside is a beautifully crafted game with a very weird and confusing story that I really ended up loving. If you haven't played Inside yet, I obviously recommend it. I'm very excited to give Limbo a try again. I'll probably even do an episode of that. And if you would like to get Inside for only $10 with six other games, then stay tuned because well, well, I guess, I guess I'm, I'm a sellout, sellout now. now. So, you like the inside review. I'm so happy for you. I, I genuinely am. I really like this game and I really hope you guys get a chance to check it out. It was free on Epic recently, but if you didn't get a chance to pick that up, then you can actually get it for Steam with this humble bundle called Scary Spooky Games 2018, something like that. I don't know. I don't write scripts for this part anymore because I want it to be more, uh, more authentic. This Humble Bundle has a total of seven games, including Inside at the $10 tier. There's three different tiers. I don't really recommend the first three games in the $1 tier. In fact, I played all three of them on stream. Uh, Butcher is like a 2D pixel-like Doom that you might like. I didn't really get too far in it because it was kind of hard to see. Agony is very, very edgy and for adults only. And I might make a video entirely of that because it was kind of garbage. The Town of Light is a walking simulator that I really disliked and I couldn't even finished because of a bug, but I'll be talking about that in another video where I talk about walking sims because I've played like seven of them this month. But I think that the other three games in the, the higher up tier is probably good. Definitely give the first three games a chance if you're interested in them. And obviously I'm selling you inside here. This is the main game you're gonna be getting. I think getting inside for $10 is a still regardless, I would probably spend $20 on this. I think I did spend $20 on this when it came out uh, a couple of years ago. 
So if you're interested in checking out the bundle, please head up the link in the description box below. There's only like a couple of days left. While you're there, consider signing up for Humble Bundle Monthly where you can get Limbo and its Humble Trove, another game I will be covering on the show. And in doing any and all of that, you will be supporting your everyday nerd. But anyways, that's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go hit that like button. If for a reason you didn't like it, you can hit the dislike button, I guess. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can see more episodes of Your Everyday Nerd. Plenty of content I'm working on right now. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, I'm actually doing weekly newsletters on my Patreon every Sunday. That's entirely free. You can just check them out um, every Sunday where I go through all of the content I'm doing every single week. Because believe it or not, the reason you don't get Your Everyday Nerd every single day is because I am involved in other projects. And I'm really excited about some of the stuff that I'm, I've been working on over the last couple of weeks and some of the stuff that I'm planning on working on for the next couple of months. There's a lot of cool stuff out there. And I'm really excited to, uh, to share it with you guys. Anyways, thank you again for watching the episode. I will see you again next time. Goodbye.